Hi everyone, my name is Andy and welcome to All Lonely Meeples. On this channel, I share solo playthroughs of various board games, including tutorials on how to play. As always, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button down below. So I was looking through my board games and I realized there's a similar theme with uh, four or five of my games, and that is Halloween or spooky. And since uh, Saturday is October 1st and we're getting to the spooky season, I thought I would share my recommendations uh, from my collection for games that fit that Halloween spooky theme. My first board game recommendation for the spooky season is Shaky Manor, a two to four player dexterity game designed by Daniel Peterson and Asger Granarud and published in 2018 by Blue Orange Games. So in Shaky Manor, it's a fun kids game and honestly, I like it as an adult. Um, in this game, you have, as you notice, there is a uh, see-through spot here because the board is actually what you see at uh, in stores and it is an eight room board. There's an insert that comes out and what you're doing is there are different levels and you have tons of different um, objects. There's an eyeball. There's a, looks like a gingerbread man, um, a treasure chest, a snake, uh, a spider, and then ghosts. And what you're doing is you'll be flipping cards from a deck. You'll shuffle them, flip the cards, and the card is going to tell you what room and what objects you want in that room. And so at the start of the game, everyone gives their board, everyone puts their stuff in the, um, their objects in their rooms, give it to the player next to you and kind of shake it up. And then someone says go, and you're all trying to move this board and get uh, the correct pieces in the room uh, first. And if you do that, we move, you move on, you get a point, you take the card, you get a point, and you add another uh, thing into your another item into your into your house and so you can play so many rounds I think in the book there are there are different levels and again this really isn't a, a solo player game but you could play this solo if you just kind of mix it up and see how fast you can uh, can get it done or how fast you can get each level done uh, but it's a fantastic game especially if you have young children not too young because the pieces are quite small but if you've got uh, uh, kids who can handle these let me show you one of them Here's the eyeball. Here is a spider. And so they're kind of small. The biggest piece is the snake. This one's hard to get through the doors. And then you've got your treasure chest. So they are small pieces. Um, it, I think it says uh, seven and up. So, but again, a fantastic game, fun filler game uh, is Shaky Manor. The next game I would recommend for the spooky season is Similo, Spookies a game published in 2021 by Horrible Guild. It's uh, two players or more. Uh, I've played this two players, three, and I think four, maybe five at one time. And what it is, it's a simple card game. There's tons of different Similo games, but all the games have different characters. This is just a little, a few characters in the larger deck. And what you're doing is one player is going to be the player giving the clues. And so they're going to randomly pick one card. For instance, let's say I pick the vampire. Okay, so I pick the vampire, I'll put it down and I'm gonna deal out 11 more cards. I think it's 12 total. Shuffle them together and I'm gonna put them on the table face up. And then I'm gonna draw a hand of cards. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get my players, the other players, to correctly keep the one um, spooky character on the table after so many rounds. I think it's four rounds. Um, and so what I do is if I have a hand of cards, so in my hand of cards, I have an evil witch, I have a grim reaper, and I have a skeleton. So I have to choose one of these cards and I put it either vertically on the table or horizontally on the table. And one of the ways means this card, if I place it this way, this card is similar to the card that I want you guys to choose. If I put it this way, this card is dissimilar than the card I want you to choose. And so the players are then gonna to talk to each other and figure out what characteristics of this card um, match or don't match the other cards on the table. And so in the first round, they're getting rid of one card off the table. Then the second round, there's two cards that are gonna go away, three cards in the third round and so on and so forth. Uh, until there are two cards left and then they will decide. It's a really fun game, especially for, for younger kids. Um, each of the cards have 
a have a fun fact at the bottom just for just for enjoyment and there's tons tons of cool cards and again similo spookies is one of several uh, similo games they all play similarly and you can combine uh, mix and match the cards for uh, a harder game and that is similo spookies my next board game recommendation for the spooky season is mysterium a two to seven player uh, social deduction game designed by Alexander Nevsky and Oleg Sidorenko and published in 2015 by Libelud. I think I said that right. And in Mysterium, you are you have one player who is going to play the ghost and the other players are going to play the investigators or the psychics. And this is one of those games similar to Codenames um, and, and others where you have these very ornate... Um, graphic cards, um, random cards with different types of pictures and colors, and the ghost is trying to get the players, to the psychics, to figure out who killed them. And you move up in levels, so everyone starts on the bottom level with um, who done it, and then the next one is where the murder could have happened, and then what weapon. And so the ghost will choose um, one solution for each player. And uh, so if I'm playing with four, four psychics, there will be four solutions. Um, and your goal in the part one of this game is to get everyone to, to finish uh, figuring out um, the four of them uh, before, before the timer in the game runs out. Uh, and so the clock will move. And I think you have six rounds to get the first part done. And then in the second round, uh, you have a chance to tell the story of how how your potential uh, solution was done, and that's kind of fun. If if you like to role play uh, in board games or in RPGs, this was this is a great uh, added bonus for uh, for you in the game. And then you're going to uh, the psychic is going to give one more set of clues based on their cards that they have, and everyone's going to vote on who they think actually did it and where and with what weapon with those combinations it's a very fun game i always want to be the ghost but then i forget how hard it is to be the ghost because i might be thinking one thing when i look at a card i'm like okay my friend's going to get this or my wife is definitely going to get um the clue that i'm thinking of with this card and then their minds are totally somewhere else um, but it's a fantastic game very fun um and that is mysterium my next board game recommendation for the spooky season is Betrayal at House on the Hill, designed by Bruce Glasgow and published in 2004 by Avalon Hill. I love this game. It is so fun. Uh, my cousin taught me this uh, several years ago, and in this game you are, it says three to six players, and what you're doing is a semi-cooperative uh a role game where you are flipping over tiles and moving your characters uh, throughout this haunted mansion and you're building the mansion as you go and there will be times where you're rolling dice and taking haunt cards or trying to collect resources and whenever you roll one of the players rolls um, a number that on the dice that are that is lower than how many haunt cards are out among all the players the second half of the game triggers so at the beginning the first half we're all together there's no there's really no problems and when someone triggers the haunt there is a big booklet of where who triggered the haunt where the haunt was triggered um, what triggered it so on and so forth and then part two happens and part two is the competitive uh, part of the game where the person who triggered the haunt is normally by themselves and all the other players are against them. And so the players will have a book and the haunt uh, player will have their own book and you're going to read for just a little bit about what you're trying to do. And then when everyone agrees, then you play the second half of the game. And I think there's over 50 scenarios and I think I've played maybe four. And it just it's very random um, how, you know, how the haunt triggers. And I find it fascinating, and I know there was one where there was a bomb in the house. I won't give too much away, but that it was a it was a timed um, timed second half, and people were trying to defuse it, and uh, the 
person who triggered the haunt was trying to stop them, and it was just fantastic. And so there are over 50 different scenarios in Betrayal at House on the Hill, um, and it's just a great, a, a great addition to a collection and for the spooky season. My next board game recommendation for the spooky season uh, is for a larger player count, but it is Infected, a 5 to 6 or 7 to 12 player game uh, designed by Brian Sloan and published by Black Force Studio. So, and if you're going to play 7 to 12, it does say one slash two copies of the game. So if you want to play 7 to 12, you just need two copies. This is a very fun, semi-cooperative, um, hidden role game. And as I'm talking, I'm getting the cards out. Uh, it is. It takes place during the bubonic plague. And you're going to set up, you're going to build some decks. There are some health cards, um, medic cards. There are some... Uh, death cards and some disease cards and basically what you're doing is you are people will be play, taking their decks and figuring out what, what roles they are secretively and so you'll have one plague doctor and the other players the plague doctor is trying to infect and possibly kill the other players and um, the other players are trying to figure out who to heal and it's basically plague doctor versus everyone else and there is depending on how many players you have. There are different cards for each round. So if I'm playing with six players, it tells me how many cards each round to pass to the people to my left or my right. And so you'll pass the cards to the person to your right and your left, and then you reveal and see if you have been infected, if you've been healed. Um, if the Plague Doctor has been revealed, so on and so forth. It's a very fun game, and it's fast setup and um, fast reset, especially if you want to play multiple times. And that is Infected. My final board game recommendation for the spooky season and the newest game I own in the this collection of spooky games is The Hunger. A two to six player grid movement, uh, slight deck builder and push your luck game designed by Richard Garfield and published in 2021 by Ori Games and Renegade Game Studios. So in the hunger, you are vampires um, on the hunt uh, all night long until the sun rises. And you'll be taking your tokens and flipping cards uh, in your hand to, to for movement um, and special powers. And you're going to be feasting on humans, uh, different types of humans. Um, it's also got a set collection aspect, uh, depending on the types of humans that you feed on throughout the game. And the push your luck aspect is you can go as far as you want and, on the board. If you can go the farthest on the board, there's a special prize that you can, you can earn. But you have so many rounds before you need to be back in the castle to score and to possibly win. Um, there are different variations uh, of difficulty in the game, but the main game is if you can make it all the way back to the castle, you'll score your points like normal. The farther away you get from the castle before the, the end of the game, the more negative points you earn because, of course, vampires don't like sunlight. And if you're too far away from the castle, you lose. And it's just a fantastic game. You're trying to figure out how, how much movement you've got um, to go places. There are places where you can uh, pick up new scoring opportunities for yourself. Um, and one might say uh, score this many points per um, this type of person that you can feed on throughout. And so you're constantly taking people from uh, uh, a, a draft setting. So you can, if I have, if I use so much of my movement and I have so much movement left, I can spend that to feast on um, whatever humans are up on the board at the time, or have other vampiric uh, powers. And so those are going to go into the deck and you'll draw them. Some of them give you movement, some of them slow you down. Um, my favorites are the spicy humans that, that make you either stop or run farther than you wanted to, and maybe push you farther away from getting back to the castle in time. It's a fantastic game, very well themed, and that is The Hunger. Thank you for joining me for my board game recommendations for the spooky season as we enter October on Saturday. I hope to see you at the table for my next playthrough.